Welcome to another Notch tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Bake Lighting to Object node. Now the Bake Lighting to Object node is a great way to optimize the scene. Scenes that are running a little bit too slow or you need a lot more performance for, for things like AR or VR. If you bake the lighting in the scene to the 3D objects, you can save a lot of overhead in performance. The scene I'm going to show you now, you can get in the downloads packages on the Notch website. And if you download the scene, you can follow the steps here and get an idea of how to bake the lighting. This is a really simple scene. It's a scene with a sphere in it and some boxes. I've currently put the scene together using a skylight that's got ray tracing enabled on it. The reason I've done this is to get better lighting results. Using ray tracing lighting on a scene is no different from using the default lighting in Notch. The costs are the same once the lighting is baked into the 3D objects. But I've also got the refine renderer on. The reason I'm doing that is it shows the lighting better once you stop so you can see that it's refining each time. So baking lighting into the objects is really good if you want a scene like this with decent lighting to run faster. I've put the parameters up on the ray tracing quite high, which makes the scene run slow. Once you bake all this lighting information into the object, it's going to run a lot faster. So I'm going to show you how to set up baked lighting to object on a simple scene. We've got a sphere in the scene and we've got these boxes. A the difference between these two objects is the sphere has got one UV map where all the polygons are unique and the boxes have got two UV maps. The reason the boxes have got two UV maps is because I want to tile a texture onto the boxes. So we can use a UV map one for that where all the polygons can overlap and it doesn't matter. You just tile a texture over everything and it looks fine. When you come to create your light maps, you need a completely unique UV set to bake the light maps onto. For instance, if you have polygons that are overlapping on the UV set, say for instance, these, this polygon here was overlapping with this polygon over here on the UV set, then the shadow information that was baked onto this polygon would also get baked onto this polygon as well, which will create shadowing artifacts. So let's set up our bake lighting nodes. It's a very simple technique. Get the bake lighting to object node, bring that into the scene. I'm going to copy and paste that node. And then I'm going to hook these up to the objects that I want to bake the lighting into. As you can see from the sphere object, it has only got one UV channel and the UV channel I have created is a unique UV channel. So none of the polygons overlap. So it's fine to use the first UV channel. First thing I'll do is run through all these different baking attributes and show you how they work. So the first one brings up the baking dialog. We'll come back to that in a minute. The show render to texture checkbox. Once you've rendered your light map, you can tick this and it will show you what the light map texture looks like. The width and the height. Obviously, these are just the width and the height of the actual texture you're creating. The 16-bit depth is the highest bit depth. This means we can get proper high dynamic range in the lighting. The post filter light map, if you check that box, it will add a blur to the light map. This means you'll get less noise on the light map. This is a great thing to tick if you've got flat surfaces. If you've got more detailed areas where there's normal map details coming through in the light map, you might not want to check that because it may get rid of some of those details. The disable bake pass through, this is where if you've got your light map on your object and you want to see what the original lighting looks like, you can just check this and it will show you what the original lighting looks like. UV channel, color is UV1. The color channel is the base UV set, so this is UV set 1. The diffuse light map channel is channel 2, so this is your second UV channel. And the color original UVs, this is again the original UVs channel. So we're going to set ours to the color channel because this is channel one and this is what our UVs are on at the moment. Uh, the baked light map, uh, this will be the light map that comes through. Once it's baked, you'll see it pop up here. So let's have a go at baking this sphere. All you do is go to the bake dialog, you open that up and you've got some more presets. You can set some presets that you've created before in here and load those in. The export type, this is on a default export. This will export a DDS file for your texture format. 
This is the where you put in the file name and you can select the location you want to export your light map to. This is the most important thing in this dialog box. How many refinement passes you want to run on the light map when you're baking it. So the more refinement passes you run, the more refined the bake will look. So I tend to run 10 refinement passes on the first bake just to get an idea of what the actual light map is going to look like when it's baked. So when you bake it, you can see the light map pops up onto the screen. Because I was only running 10 refinement passes, it bakes pretty quickly. I'm also going to check the post filter light map box because I want to add a bit more blur onto the scene. So I'll run it again. So this is our actual light map. Once it's baked, you can actually turn off the skylight because all the lighting is baked into the sphere. If I bake the light map again now without the skylight on, obviously it's going to go black. So I'll turn the skylight back on and then I'll bake the light map. I think I'm going to increase the resolution on this. So I'm going to bake it again. A slightly higher resolution image. So the next thing to do is once you're happy with your bake, and you're happy with the look of it, you can bake with more refinement passes. I tend to bake at around 200 refinement passes for my final light map bake. And this will take a little longer, so we'll speed this bit up. So there you go, that's finished. And that's my high resolution with a lot of refinement passes, and that's looking pretty good. So now we will bake the rest of the scene. So I'm going to select the boxes. The boxes have a UV channel 2 on it, and that's the light map channel. You have to set this as well to your bake lighting to object dialog box. So I'm going to change that to diffuse light map. I want some post filter light map on it, make the resolution even higher. So I'm going to put that maybe at 3000. And then I'm going to bake this. So I'm going to bake it with 10 refinement passes just to see what it looks like first. So that baked quite quickly. Now I can hide the light and there you go. That's the bake light map. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. So the next thing to do is bake it with more refinement passes. So I'll turn the light back on, go back to my dialog box. I'm going to set this to 200 refinement passes. And then I'm going to speed this bit up again because it's going to take a little while. So that's finished now, and that's a pretty decent bake. So once you've baked all your light maps, I can show you some of the other things you can do with them. The disable baking pass through, if you click that on, you can obviously see the original lighting when the lighting's on. If you show the rendered texture, this will bring up the actual light map texture, and you can see that and how it's baked in. The post filter light map, if you click that just before rendering, you'll get a little bit more blurring in your texture. I'll just render that quickly and it'll give you an idea of how it looks. So this is with 50 iterations and that's with it off. If I turn it on and render it again with the same amount of iterations. The light maps got a little bit of blur on them, so they just look a little nicer and less noisy. So now that you've baked all the lighting in, let's have a look at the performance of a bake scene. So if you press play or spacebar, you can see that the frames per second is well over 100 FPS. CPU is, well, it's jumping between one and a bit and seven. It's probably around three or something like that. So once you've baked your lighting in, the performance is far better than if this scene was real time ray traced. If the scene was real time ray traced, you wouldn't be able to get the fidelity you can with baking the lighting in to the shadows or the lighting. To get this kind of fidelity in the scene, the frame rate would be really low. So that's one of the advantages and benefits of using the, the baked lighting to object node. Now, even when you finish baking the scene, you can still add lights to the scene. And I'm going to show you how to add a few more lights to the scene. And we can also add animated lights that would actually animate over the baked lighting. So the first thing we do is bring in a light to the scene. I'm just going to bring in a default spotlight, connect that to the root node. So the light's not actually showing up on the scene. And the reason for this is because it's not baked into the scene. What you need to do to make this visible is one, you can rebake the scene. But the other thing is you can add, if you add the skylight 
to the actual baked node input. It'll only show all the lights that are baked into the mesh. Any lights that aren't baked into the mesh will be generated over the top of that. So I'm going to add some shadows to this as well. So sh casting shadows. Now, if I add this light to the scene, to see it, I'm going to have to bake it in. So I'll quickly run a bake on both of these so you can see it. So now the light's baked into the scene. I'm going to copy this light. I'm going to add it to the scene, but I'm going to make it blue. What I want to do, I'm going to add a math modifier. I'm going to add it to the position X, just to give it a bit of movement in the scene. And you can see that's moving in the scene and moving all the objects. Now what I can do is if I turn these two lights out, so the scene is running, we have animated lights on it and it's still running at well over 100 FPS. And these animated lights are casting shadows and they're working as they should be. So you can do quite a lot to a scene. If you bake the static lighting in, you're going to increase the performance, especially if it's ray traced lighting or your default skylight. And then over the top, you can add any lighting that you want animated into the scene and it will be relatively cheap compared to if all the lighting was dynamic and real time. Thank you for watching this tutorial and hope to see you in the next Notch tutorial.